This is the Deensis X1, an exoskeleton or a wearable device that's like a robot for your legs. It uses a pair of AI electric motors that gives you up to the equivalent of 83 pounds of assistance when you're walking or running. And I can actually feel it, like it is definitely kind of moving with me. It's actually really hard to describe what it's doing, but it's not forcing me to move, but I can definitely feel it kind of moving with me as I'm doing that. It can even enable a maximum running speed of up to 16.7 miles per hour. It's making it a lot easier for me to actually sprint, because normally sprint is hard. And few people actually sprint, they jog, right? They're, they're kind of trotting. But with this thing, it's easier to sprint, is what I'm noticing. All of this comes in a package that weighs just 3.7 pounds and is small enough to fit inside of a backpack. Does it work as advertised? Let's find out. So if you don't know what an exoskeleton is, I'm gonna demonstrate it in this video. But first, let's go ahead and put this on. Now putting it on is pretty simple. You just secure it tightly around your waist and then secure each section to your legs. It comes with a rechargeable battery pack that you simply secure to the outside of the exoskeleton. And there's a button in the back to power it on. And there are buttons on each of the motors to change modes and adjust assistance strength. So to control this thing, there's a, um, there's a button in the back and you can you know, press it to change your modes. But the thing is, it's really hard to tell on the actual device like what mode you're in. So the best way to know that and you know, things like your battery life are um, on the app. So I have it connected via Bluetooth to the app. It was actually very fast to connect, so that's, that's a good sign. But we have eco mode, which when you're in eco mode, it's giving you the most minimal uh, support. And I can actually feel it, like it is definitely kind of moving with me. It's actually really hard to describe what it's doing, but it's not forcing me to move, but I can definitely feel it kind of moving with me as I'm doing that. But if I change it to sport mode, now I can feel it, yeah, kind of picking up the pace a little bit more. It's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm running in sport mode and it does give you more velocity than you're used to. So you can actually fall on this slippery mud here. You have to watch out to adjust, you know, your, your senses truly, but even your thinking. You have to be alerted. It's not your normal body motion anymore. It's not all coming from you. And so sometimes it pushes me and I'm like, oh, there's a leaf over here. <laughs> <laughs> now to be clear, this exoskeleton is more like an e-bike. It still requires you to do the movement of walking or running, but its motors help you lift your legs, thus reducing strain on your muscles so you can go farther for longer. But it's still a hill. <laughs> okay, so I'm suited up. We're going to climb up this hill and uh, find a really nice view at the end. So I'm going to get started here. First of all, in eco mode. Nice, just a little bit of assistance, not too much, but I'm just getting started on this hill. So once I start going up this incline, I'm gonna need a little bit more help, so I'm gonna move it over into sport mode. Sport mode. There we go, sport. Oh yeah, picking up the pace here. All right, heart rate is going. It was a good walk up that hill, but uh, this is, I can definitely feel the exoskeleton helping me go up the hill, rounding the corner now to the very top where we will see the view soon. All right, and we've made it. This is By Crack Park. That actually is the name of it. <laughs> but uh, it gives you a really nice uh, urban view of downtown Seattle, part of downtown Seattle. If you keep going in this direction, you would get to Cary Park, which gives you that iconic Seattle view with the Space Needle. This is kind of a lesser known park on the other side of Queen Anne. And still offers, in my opinion, a very nice view as well. Bit of a hike to get up here, but if you have an exoskeleton, it makes it a lot easier. What I'm noticing is that the more your leg go up, the more assistance you get, which makes sense because truly what this device is doing is attaching to your waist and then helping you move your legs. That's really the whole thing. So the more your leg goes this way, the more help you're getting from it. Which means, you know, in cases like big steps like this, you'll get the most help out of it. While when you're walking softly, you won't feel it as much, which makes a lot of sense, you know. But yeah, the, the truth is, if you have big legs that have hard time 
carrying your weight. This is the uh, most help <laughs> you'll get out of the device. If you have strong legs and a weak back, <laughs> it's a little different because it goes on your back, right? So yeah, I'm guessing it's really, if you're doing something very strenuous up a big hill, and if you're also frail and your legs, muscles are not that great, or maybe your legs are heavy, but the muscles are weak, in a situation like that, you would get a lot of help. So now I'm doing the so-called aqua mode, which is really a resistance. And that too actually resembles to me what I've seen in YMCA, the arthritis class do. You know, they go into the pool and they start these little motions with the water providing little resistance so, and also some buoyancy. And therefore, um, they don't get that shock on their bodies if they have arthritis, right? So similarly, this thing is resisting me a little bit, but it's in kind of just fluid way, you know, it tries to be intelligent about how it's resisting me. While, you know, in the opposite mode, the assistant mode, it does the opposite thing where it assists you on the way of your leg. So now my leg has a bit of resistance as it's going forward and up and down. I actually feel the resistance a lot more than I feel the assistance, <laughs> if funny enough. Maybe that's just because my, my body is, um, you know, senses are perceiving it more so. You know, when something is helping you, you take it for granted. When something is fighting against you, you're much more aware of it. I definitely feel the, the resistance and um, more difficulty walking now, which allegedly, you know, it's going to help me get stronger. So then I won't need the device. <laughs> but it's interesting, yeah. So yeah, I think ideally suited for all aging people who want to remain active and who have a bit hard time really with the weight of their own legs. Truly, I am happy we're not in such condition because I've never felt like my weight, my legs way too much. <laughs> yeah, first try. I've been excited to try this type of technology for a long time, primarily for the sake of um, trying to anticipate what happens when we get old because I'm very keen on being active until late, late in life. I don't want to have 20 throwaway years in the end, you know what I mean? When I'm 80 and I have a hard time getting out of the house and walking down the block, because the way we live now is we walk hours a day. What happens if things give out to the point, you know, kind of your main exercise and joy of life is um, gone because you can't walk properly. That would be so sad. This kind of device actually tries to ensure you can continue walking. That also it applies to injuries. If you have an injury and then you can't walk now, one leg too much weight on it or something, then you put this on it to carry your leg for you a little bit so that injury can recover faster or something like that, you know. So yeah, it's great that this technology is advancing because in our old age we'll probably get great benefit from it. So one thing we weren't really sure about was how much battery life this uh, device was going to have. Uh, so we're checking the app because it's a little hard to tell exactly on the device without looking at the app. And right now it's saying that we're at 76%. So we exhausted about a quarter of it messing around testing. Means if we went on a really long walk, we would exhaust the whole thing. And that's something you want to watch for because um, you may depend on it, right? If, if you depend on its ability to get you in and out of your house, then you have to really watch the range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes with one battery. I'm guessing that you could probably buy multiple batteries, so that would be a way to possibly get around that. But yes, each battery does have its limits. So you yeah, can bag a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like load up another clip, yeah. load up another <laughs> clip, keep going. <laughs> so closing thoughts on this device here, this exoskeleton. I found that it is much better at assisting me when I'm towards the edges of my performance ability. So if I'm sprinting, it's much easier to sprint than it would be without it. I don't get as much winded, I don't feel the shock as much, I gain speed a lot faster and it feels kind of like, yay, I'm flying. Um, and somewhat similar would be if you're climbing a very steep mountain. So like if my legs are going really high like this on every step, which sometimes happens when you hike, that's when you do really shine. And I'm guessing Likewise, if I had a um, condition where I was a lot weaker or had injuries and then the smaller motions would be hard for me, then I also would get more from the device. Uh, one obvious concern is that you're carrying weight on your waist, which is extra. 
And so I, I believe it will actually tire your waist more this way, but you gain benefit in your legs. You know, that's the, the magic of it, what it does. I think for me, like I'm not in condition right now to be sprinting or doing any extreme movements like that. So it was a little bit harder for me to feel that effect. But I'm really interested in the aqua mode where it gives you that resistance because that's something that if you are in a position where you're not quite ready to be sprinting or be climbing mountains yet, if you do that aqua mode, you could build up to that. So it helps condition you to be in better shape. Yeah, and this is a technology which I've had on, on my radar for a very long time that I want to try out and I'm really happy that I did. It really has come a long way. Um, you see there are giant ones out there that will help a factory worker lift like 300 pounds effortlessly and stuff like that. And this is for the average person that's going out on a walk or a run or a hike. And to me that device actually has more application than the giant one because a wider um, amount of people can use it. And it already actually can assist you to go out and be more active, which, you know, is the whole uh, pitch right here.